Welcome from me, Jonah Barrington, to this, the last stop on the gruelling PSA Hitech Super Series Tour, where all roads lead to Hatfield, London. The Galleria Outlet Centre plays host to this prestigious event, the Equitable Life Super Series Finals, which sees the world's top eight squash players gather for the all-important title. We haven't had a Super Series event since Bombay before Christmas, so before the action starts, Let's take a look at the rankings of the players in these finals. After nearly a decade of Janshakan supremacy, we now have a new world number one, Peter Nicol from Scotland. And Janshakan himself in the unfamiliar position of number two. With Jonathan Power, the Canadian, missing through injury, at number four, we have the current world champion, Rodney Isles. The number five, Ahmed Barada from Egypt, misses the competition with a virus. So we have at six, Alex Goff from Wales. At seven, returning from yet another ban, Anthony Hill, the Australian. And at number eight, from Lincolnshire, the 25 years old Mark Challoner now back to full form. And it's good to see Del Harris back in business after fracturing his wrist at number nine. And finally, at 10, and this just shows the quality of the competition, the new national champion, Simon Park. With a host of quality names in attendance, new world number one Peter Nichols' game will be under scrutiny. But has his rise to the top been a surprise for the 24-year-old Scott? Yeah, I always believed it. Um, I call it confidence, maybe some people might call it arrogance, but I've proved I managed to do it, so and it was, it was justified, wasn't it? So it's something I've always wanted to be. Um, to achieve it now, uh, age of 24, and in such circumstances that I, I did as well, it's great. I, mean, I couldn't have asked for any more. Um, playing really well, fit, strong, mentally prepared for it and looking forward to the challenge. I know it's going to be a challenge because everyone's going to want to beat me. Victory won't come easy for Nickel though with the likes of world champion Rodney Isles eager to down the new world number one. There's a lot of new players coming through so you know it's going to be exciting here with Peter Nicol being the number one in the world at the moment and, and the rankings sort of changing uh, every month now so you know, it's going to be a very exciting year to see who's going to uh, you know, it uh, turned up with that number one spot, you know, consistently throughout the year. You know, there's a lot of good players around and, you know, just the consistency factor is going to be the main thing in staying injury free. So you're here for a reason. That's because you've, uh, you've achieved, you know, to a high standard in the Super Series events for 97. So, you know, every match is going to be tough. Best of three for the, for the pool rounds. Uh, you know, so that's going to be fast and furious for, for a shorter period of time than we're normal, uh, normally used to. And of course, back from a debilitating bout of tonsillitis, the legendary Jan Khan is determined to claim back his number one spot. Well, of course, you know, in mean, that top, uh, top eight uh, tournament, you know, like Super Seed, you know, that's quite hard because all players in the top, you know, and, uh, but, uh, you know, I will try to be still uh, play better and to be trying to be win. So those are all the names to look out for, but before we begin, let's take a look at the format of this unique event. An eight-man contest, the early matches see the field split into two groups of four. Two round robins with the top two advancing into the semis. So we will first take a look at the Harrow group. And here we have a mouth-watering prospect of competition between Peter Nicol, Rodney Isles, Anthony Hill and Simon Park. Our first match is Park v Isles and former world number two Chris Robertson joins me in the commentary box. In this opening match in the Super Series event in the Harrow group Simon Park took the most of his opportunity a late replacement for Ahmed Barada from Egypt who pulled out with the flu at the last minute. Simon came into the tournament as national champion full of confidence saved a game ball in the first game against the world champion eventually took it out 17-16 played some good aggressive squash in the second game got a nice early lead the man from Australia found it hard to peg him back 
The rallies were fast and furious. Simon Park eventually ran out 15-10 and two love winner. Simon was particularly pleased with this effort. It gave him an early advantage in his best of three round robin matches. All players can do with some help between games and here's Peter Nicholl taking on board some words of wisdom from coach Neil Harvey. The world number one had a comfortable 15-2, 15-12 win over Australia's Anthony Hill in the other opening match in the Harrow Group. The Scot was totally dominant in the crucial first game and looked in exemplary form in the second. Anthony did finally find his way into the match but had to play the treacherous catch-up system. His opponent was not to be denied and had to be pleased with his early form in the competition. The left-hander now has to withstand the pressure of being the world number one and he already knows that can indeed create a very different and new problem. Nice one to have though. Nicol went on to beat Simon Park 15-10, 15-9 in his second encounter before taking on his world open rival Rodney Isles in their final match in the Harrow Group. Rodney Isles needing a convincing victory here to have any chance of a semi-final spot. Got off to a very fast and competitive start against the world number one. Losing the first game 15-11, he never really came to grips with the pace and the control of Peter Nicol. Losing the second game 15-5 and moving into the playoff stages. So advancing through from the Harrow Group, we have the dominant unbeaten Peter Nicol and Yorkshire's Simon Park playing consistently good squash. Let's now move on to the personnel in the fleet group. Jancha Khan, Alex Goff, Mark Challoner and Del Harris. Our first fleet group match is between Jancha Khan and Mark Challoner. Challoner played an excitingly aggressive first game and placed the Pakistani under considerable pressure with his blend of speed and patience. Mark was not discomforted by the reputation of his illustrious opponent and at no stage allowed Jancha to slow the game with his usual wily tactics. Mark closed down the first game quite brilliantly. He took the first game 15-11. The Lincolnshire man maintained his momentum in the second, but all credit to Jancha, who not only braved the storm to save a match point at 15-16, but then won the game to level the match. Jancha, still looking slightly rusty and a trifle heavy, took the high ground in the third and final game. He raced to a commanding lead. But Challoner dug in again and chased his opponent all the way to the tape. Despite this loss, Mark would have to be pleased with his all-round form, which continues to be a revelation in 1998. Jancha, somewhat relieved, wins his first match 10-15, 17-16, 15-11. Mark moved on to beat the higher ranked Welshman Alex Goff to love and now completes his round robin matches with the match against Del Harris from England. Del, without a victory so far in this competition, is playing for pride and for some form, while Mark is just looking for another victory to secure a semi final position. The game never really got out of Mark's grasp. In full control of the technical and the physical aspects of the game, he constantly had Del Harris under pressure and ran out a convincing 15-12, 15-7 winner. Alex Goff caused the first major upset in the Super Series Finals. The world number seven from Wales never allowed Jancha Khan to settle, moving the ball and his opponent inexorably round the court with his trademark variations of stroke. Alex edged the first 15-13, needed the second to go through, but Jancha prevailed 15-12. The third was all Alex, 15-9.
Despite that loss, Jansha made it to the semi-finals, but only as runner-up to the surprise victor of the group, Mark Challoner, who's really lifted his game yet again for this tournament. Yeah, the um, game's come together towards the end of last year and um, obviously finished on a really high point just before Christmas by beating Rodney Isles, the new world champion. So that was a huge sort of milestone, I guess, in my career. And then uh, having had uh, a little rest over Christmas and not too many... Um, late nights. Um, I started this year quite well too by playing in the British Closed and um, I'm, I met Peter Nicol on the 1st of February um, just on the very day he, he moved to number one and uh, managed to pull the best performance out um, of my career So and I beat him three loads. So yeah, I'm quite happy with the way this year's going so far. Welcome back to the Galleria in Hatfield as the Equitable Life Super Series Finals reaches the semi-final stage. The field has narrowed to four, chasing the $43,000 prize fund. In the first semi we have Jen Khan, who has produced a bit of a mixed bag in this event. Two wins and one defeat. Has he flattered at times only to deceive? He is up against Peter Nicol, who has dominated his group and this competition so far. Three matches, three victories, not a game dropped. The current number one against his illustrious predecessor. Points to prove for both, perhaps? It should be compulsive viewing. Let's see. We join the match at the beginning of the first game. Well, I'm sure Jonah are in for a wonderful match here. Maybe a little bit earlier than anticipated. Most people would probably feel this might have been the final. But because of Janish's second place finishing in his group, he's coming up against Peter Nicol a little bit earlier. But both players still have the eye on the title. And obviously, Chris, to a fascinating psychological struggle because Peter Nichol did have the better of the matches in the last half of last year. And of course has gone on to displace Jancha as the world number one. Jancha having lost that and indeed no longer the world champion will have come here, I'm sure, absolutely determined take this field apart and in doing so if necessary to take on and beat Peter Nichol. If Peter continues to play shots like that Janisha will really have to show his qualities but I'm sure when he came off the plane from Pakistan Jonah used to going into a squash club and playing in more arena type venues here they're Met with the fact they're playing in the middle of a shopping center. Great venue. Yes, let. Yes, Good for spectators. But it does add another psychological twist to the game. The concentration and the focus of both players often does get tested in these type of conditions. Well, these are what I would call really modern conditions in the sense that the professionals have to be prepared to play in all kinds of different circumstances and certainly those who've played in Pakistan as as indeed you have know full well that the atmosphere in those courts in those arenas uh, is very lively and whatever difficulties there may be in adapting to the Galleria I would expect these blokes to by now already to be very comfortable in their surroundings. Well, they've both started off with good, consistent shots. Both players looking reasonably steady. Not a lot of movement from both players at the front of the court. And obviously the sounding out stage is happening. And Janish has got that patient look at the moment. 
just as he starts to move the ball around a little bit more. A little bit of an unforced error there though. Had Peter on the end, just tinning it. Well, it's been an excellent contest throughout this first game. Because the format in semis and final is the best of five, we've now got the sort of typical searching out in this first game period. Still crucial, but not the sudden death aspect of the best of three. And that type of shot, Jonah, is just starting to show that Janisher is getting a little bit more confident with his forward game. He's getting in front a little bit more often. He does look reasonably comfortable taking the ball in. Well, that was a really good point from Peter Nickel, working the front right-hand corner. Jancha has these bandaged knees. He says they're a little bit sore from the extended amount of training that he has done over the Christmas period in preparation for this event and of course later on for the British Open. You just get the feeling that Peter Nicol is very anxious to grab this first game, Jonah. New world number one, wants to convince the public and maybe himself that he deserves to be there. The crashing forehand volley short there from Janisha, takes him to game ball. Good opportunity for Peter to put it away. But Janja comfortably returns it. But not the second time. So the game ball saved. Janja calling set three. Means first player to 17. Oh, that's a clever bit of work from Janja. Got his racket right up, could have gone in short, and then biting depth. And now he wishes he called set one there, Jonah. Would have given him the first game. But that type of shot really does show that he's in full control of his volleying at the moment. Good position to take the ball forward and, and deep, as you stated, creating a lot of uncertainty in Peter's mind. No let given on that. Judge not capable of reaching the third one. I was quite surprised to see the third shot go in, Chris. He was not really well balanced for it. He put two in. Costly. Second game ball for Jancha. Oh, and sneaky little drop from the back. Sneaks the first game, 17-14. Peter Nichol is noted for his volleying skills and here we see a couple of contrasting situations. The first one, very early on in the match, good solid position in front of Janice Khan, clinical finish. And in the second we see the position on the backhand side, ball taken in quite well, Jancha though comfortably returning, second volley going in, Jancha easily there again and then Peter's volley from a deeper position off balance and unable to cover. Well, Jonah, the ball's been thrown back in court, but hopefully that'll be a change of fortune for Peter because Janisha really has taken a stranglehold in this second game. He's controlling the pace, the tempo, and he's starting to really look like he's on a mission here. Yes, Led. Yes, Led. Ten, three. Yes, and I think the, the way he's tempered the normally quicker pace that these two have played at in their most recent matches and 
one would have to say, and that has probably been to Jancha's disadvantage. In this match, he has had less very positive control at a, a slower pace, and he's felt much more comfortable. And there we saw an excellent example of Peter Nichol picking up the pace around the middle of the court, having got an opening, and whipping a cross-court volley in. But again, Janice bites back, Jonah with cross-court lob. And really it's lots of drops and lobs and push volleys. And finished off with lovely touch there on the forehand side. You can clearly see that every opportunity is looking to take the pace off it, asking Peter to hit dead weight balls, which we all know is extremely tiring and difficult to do. And it certainly does seem as if the pace of the court is much better suited to what Jancha wants to do. 13, He's putting a lot of distance between Peter Nickel and the ball. And as you say, Chris, taking the pace off the ball constantly. He's actually now forcing Peter into that same type of game there. But the difference being he's not clinical enough at the front and the winners are coming. So with that deceptive winner out of the front court, game ball for Jancha for two love, and immediately taken across court deceptively from a good position. 17-14, 15-4. And Jancha with his bandaged knees and palpably overweight has really played tactically brilliantly. Well, Jonah, Peter's really got to look for a much better start in this third game. He's got the capabilities of coming from two love down. The physical and the mental capabilities, that is. But with shots like that from Jonah Shakan, particularly early on, it could be hard work for him. And again, we see good evidence that the ball at the front of the court is dying quite quickly. Janice deliberately hasn't put a lot of pace on this ball throughout the match. Just floating and lifting, pushing the ball around the court. Consequently, the bounce of the ball is not as great as Peter Nickel would like. And yet another rally in which we've seen Janice at his best using his wrist to twist the ball out of one back corner and swinging it across to the other back corner and then the faded drop shot in the front of the court terrific control over the pace of the game again we see peter working hard to try and pick the pace up striking the ball With a lot of authority he's just struggling at the moment to get onto the ball he's struggling to find it and that really is a credit to Janice Shakan. Peter going for the backhand volley, but no authority in it. Very despondent body language. Again, Peter persisting with that high backhand volley short. Hasn't really been a friend to him today. And I have to say, Jonah, I've never really seen Peter Nichols so disillusioned with himself. He really does look like he's lost for answers here. Well, it's a little bit like one or two of his matches with Jonathan Power, Chris, where Jonathan has got on top. Has forced Peter to play a game that hasn't been conducive to him on the day and then gradually Peter has become more and more unsettled but it has to be said that Jancha has played quite brilliantly he's been in really relaxed vein throughout the match and he is now at match point working the ball deep Peter still trying to volley still trying to lob but Jancha with that deep volley 
wins yet another point and the match by three games to love 17-14, 15-4, 15-3 comprehensively The tactics of Janish Khan and the success of this match are well illustrated in this rally. Lots of lifting and slowing down of the ball, taking the volley options away from Peter Nickel as much as possible. When he has a chance, chipping him forward under full control, even at the back of the court, a nice float boast to give himself plenty of time. Another lift across, forcing the error. Peter has plenty to think about, questions to be answered by the Scot. Yeah, he looks as if he's playing um, much better today, he's playing straighter and tighter, keeping the pace off the ball, um, which stopped me from pushing forward and, and bowling a lot and, and, and putting the pace on. So, and when he did that, he got in front of me and then played a few winners, and then I sort of started making mistakes, trying to push it too hard, and then it all went wrong from there. Welcome back again. A happy Jancha takes time out to satisfy his fans before the second semi-final. Young Mark Challoner showed his mettle in all three matches to win his group. His surge forward in the last few months has followed a difficult period of injury and slow recovery. He beat world number one Peter Nickel in February in the national semis and is looking the part once again. Yorkshireman Simon Park won the Nationals in stunning style a month ago. He has carried that form into the Super Series Finals and fully deserved to take the second spot in his group. Simon overcame Mark in the British, but it was the tightest 3-0 victory I have seen in years. Well, this is the third time we've played each other this season and uh, at the moment I'm, I'm two love up. The first match we played was in the US Open and that was um, a 3-1. But you can't really think about past matches, you know, it's, it's the future. And, and he's watching him play in this tournament. It's probably the best I've ever seen him play. So, you know, he's, he's not going to be thinking about history. You know, he's just going to try and beat me and, and I'm going to try and beat him. Well, the start of the second semi-final is between two players that traditionally like to play at a very fast pace. Lots of volleys, lots of aggressive driving of the ball. I don't see any particular reason, Jonah, that's going to be any different on this occasion. One up. I'm sure, Chris, that the pace will be full and frank, but at the same time, Simon's tactics in the national final was to to play Mark pretty straight, not to open the court to him, essentially to get him behind before he played the ball in, and he did play extraordinarily well in that national final. That's just a month ago. Mark would have been very disappointed with the outcome of that, at the death, he was close to extending the match into a fourth game, and a lot of people felt that it, the match was starting to run his no way. No let Two love. Both of them are perhaps a little bit fresher at this stage of the proceedings than they were then. But it's already, we can see, Jonah, there's been a lot more power-orientated driving and movement from both players in comparison to the Peter Nickel Janish Khan semi-final. Both are extremely good movers, very fit and fast. And I suppose it's the one that can tighten that up and play the big points well. We'll go on to make the final. 
Certainly Mark Challoner very rarely lets a ball go past his racket around the middle of the court. We can see here evidence. His terrific ability on the volley and his early ball tactics. Having said that, Simon also, as you say, excels when the ball is being moved quickly around. I still think that it's not necessarily to Simon's advantage to play the ball that open around the court, but to pick his punches to get in front and then to be very positive going short. Mark taking a little bit of time out here, Jonah. He's done well to hold on to Simon here. Bit of an unforced error there. But it really has come to the critical stage of this first game. Again, great tee control there for Mark Chandler at full stretch. Able to get enough on the ball to keep it tight, to hold his central position. And he really does excel at that type of shot. Yeah, and certainly if you don't get up with him on the tee area and fight for that territory, then you've really got no chance. Just let the follow through. And Simon asking for a let there. Referee only giving him a let because he said he caught him on the follow through. Simon's telling him he caught him on the backswing. And because of that, he's looking for a stroke, not a let. Sensible recovery shot from Simon. And again, both players still playing at a fast pace, but lovely change of angle there from Simon. I've been playing the ball very straight. Turning the racket face at the last second, cutting the ball cross-court short. He's certainly using that variation exceptionally well. We saw it there across the face of the front wall, just getting Mark Challoner off balance. And he's forged the four-point lead well such a clever play as well Jonah because the previous two or three points he played the ball very straight maybe deliberately so to set up those type of shots at times Simon gives the impression he's not thinking too much on the squash court but he really is a very good tactical player has great awareness about what's going on well, he's certainly not in the headless chicken syndrome here, Chris. Very concentrated performance. And edging away towards that first game. He's just had Mark a little bit unsettled over the last four or five points. A little bit off balance. Again, another example. But Mark's recovering also exceptionally well when under pressure. Just up. Back wall boast back into play. And again, we see the use of the cross court flick shot. Brings him game ball. And it's never nice as a player to go completely the wrong way like Mark did just then. Simon really did set up the point beautifully. Again, good use of the lob, getting out of that trouble spot. And nice tight ball there. Mark unable to do the same. And Simon takes the first game, 15-8. From 9-8 up in the first game, Simon Park played some excellent squash to win the next six points in a row and to take the first game, 15-8. His use of the straight ball as his stock weapon, as we see in this clip, was excellent, setting the tone for the change of angle at the right particular time. After some good straight balls, he brings in the cut cross court for the winner. And another example of exactly that, working the ball straight,
getting Mark deep in the back court. Not the best cross court. Mark lets it go, plays it out, and then the late flicker cross court. Beautifully done. Well, certainly a, a little bit one way traffic at the moment. Simon really with a commanding lead in this game. And very, very difficult to get back from a 4-10 deficit for Mark. Still trying to volley early though. But what a finish from Simon Park. Cross court Nick to devastating effect. Well obviously the confidence level is very high there for Simon. Made that difficult shot look very easy. And I really think Mark Challen has been very well restricted by Simon Park here, Jonah. He's kept him very tight, very straight. He's got into any trouble, he's lifted the ball cross court. And he really is winning some points at, at will at the moment. It's game ball and this is good for Simon. Mark is going to have to gather himself for the third game because that's it. 15-8, 15-4. Two love lead for Simon Park. Well, a coach's work is never done. What do you say to your man after a 15-4 drubbing? Hello again and we're back at the Equitable Life Super Series semi-final. Two games to love lead, Simon Park over Mark Challoner. Well Jonah, Mark Challoner has reputation for being a real fighter. There's a lot of heart, there's a lot of pride. 15-8, 15-4 is not looking too good on the scoreboard for him. But I'm sure he's going to hang in there to the bitter end. Yeah, he's a hungry boy. Quality mind. Full of discipline. Certainly won't quit on it. And that was a good positive start there from Mark. Actually got in front on a loose ball. Yes, let's. Yes, let's. One love. Got the better of Simon around the front of the court, and that hasn't happened a lot so far in this match. And I can tell you, Chris, if Simon just drops the momentum down, doesn't play with the same consistency of line and variation, then Mark Challoner will be at him. This is a really good rally for Mark. Control over it, forward positions, looking for the winners. Simon under tremendous pressure though, absorbing. And then the trademark flick, this time Mark just gets it. Now he has to hang in. Simon back on the defensive but gets out of it, forward position. Great rally. Crowd love this kind of thing. Terrific variation. Everything that you could ask for and then the error finally from Simon. Very few of those in this match. A really good opening for Mark Challoner. Mark's done extremely well here. Maintained his three point gap. But what he's really maintained is the ability to get in front of Simon to deal with the straight balls down, down, down. and the confinement and Simon's put upon him. We both thought it was down. Your shot was down. Bit of a query here on Simon's boast. Referee's called it down. Ten six. I've been very impressed, Jonah, by the fact that Mark Challoner is able to maintain this lead, particularly after such a bad first two games on his part. 
and he's squeezed one or two unforced errors out of Simon to Chris which but that was a really bad shot making a nonsense really of what he's done in this game to forge the lead and all the good work Mark Chandler had done maintaining the lead Jonah getting 10-6 up for some unknown reason all the errors have come flooding back and a little bit of lack of discipline now he finds himself one point down at the crucial time of the game and with that sloppy type of shot he finds himself match ball down 14. 14. 14. 14. so Simon Park has the opportunity to seal the win in straight games a disappointing last seven or eight minutes for Mark Jelena but he saved the day for now very aggressive play there from Mark still sticking to his principles at times gets him into a little bit of trouble he still finds himself match ball down That's a terrific attack on the forehand wing. Carved the ball into the forehand, Nick on the volley. Takes the breath away, not only from his opponent, but most people in the crowd. Simon rightly calling three there, Jonah. Two crashing forehand winners from Mark Challoner. Doesn't want to be calling one, even though he squeezed the error. This, Chris, mirrors the end game in the Nationals when Simon had the two-love lead and then, in a sense, was clinging on to win 3 naught. where his physical resources seem perhaps to be dwindling rather faster than his opponent. Here one would have to say that Simon is fresher, but Mark has come back at him. Can he take this third game? And again, another squeezed error there from Simon. Brings up another match ball. Well, Simon has remained very composed as the storm has gone on around him. Didn't make that, though. Another ball flattened into the straight forehand nick on the volley. And Simon's got to wonder what he's got to do here. The last three points he's lost have all come down to outright forehand winners. Well, he finished off the Nationals with a cliff-hanging return of service cross-court on the volley into the neck. Will he go for that again? And he did go for it, but Mark read it, and he just got up to it. And also squeezed the error from the deep ball. Well, Mark Challen is certainly riding his luck a little bit. For he's bought himself game ball, but also fifth match point for Simon. Mark with biting work. Simon trying to work it straight. Oh, and very loose. And a stroke given. Came right out. So Mark Challoner pulls one back. An amazing tie break, 17 16. It's 2 1 for Simon Park. Well, the crowd in the Galleria has really warmed to the task. They've been captivated by the battle between these two stars. And there is still nothing in it. The early advantage that Simon Park forged now has almost disappeared. And the pace of the game is cut back a little bit now. Both players getting a little bit cagey. Again, good use of the flick from Simon. And again, good opening. Couldn't take advantage. 
Again, settles back into the straight pattern. Very big rally this. Winner will get to 13. Oh, and that has to go down as a very, very poor shot. Considering how well he's done to get back. Complete miss hit. Well, it was really wayward, and it does, does give that little bit of something to the opposition, too, when you have a mistake like that. It's a real Christmas present, and there haven't been that many of those. Good work by Simon. The call for a let. No let. No let given. Difficult to see from our commentary. And it's match point for Simon Park to go through to the final of the Super Series. Good position, goes for the flick again. And it has proved most productive as he takes the fourth game and the match. Three games to one. No, I knew it was going to be a very tough match. Uh, we've always had really tough games, and and Mark never get, never gives in, never gives an inch, and uh, and nor do I. So it always makes for a really hard game. At the business end of the fourth game, Simon learned his lesson, keeping the ball off Mark Challoner's dangerous forehand side, playing it nice and tight up the backhand wall, taking him in forward, forcing the drop. Fantastic drive down the wall. Looking for the opening. Here it comes. Set up for the backhand volley. Good night, nurse. Sadly, we have come to the end of our time, but do join us next week as Jancha Khan and Simon Park go head to head for the Ultimate Super Series title. Welcome once again to Hatfield, London, as the High Tech Super Series Tour comes to a close with the Equitable Life Super Series Finals. These are promoted by Advantage International. I'm Jonah Barrington, and I'll be bringing you stroke-by-stroke -stroke play from the final here at the Galleria Outlet Centre, as this week-long Festival of Squash draws to a close. We've already seen a series of round-robin matches, followed by two fascinating semi-final clashes. So it's just the playoff games to go before the final showdown. As you can see, we have best of three games playoffs for the lower placings. Then the ultimate shootout. In the 7th, 8th places playoff, Del Harris edged Anthony Hill 15-11, 15-12. And the final day's proceedings were now well underway. We pick up the action in the 5th, 6th places playoff as Welshman Alex Goff takes on the current world champ Rodney Isles. Chris Robertson joins me courtside. Well, that's a strange looking serve there from Rodney Isles. And another strange shot there, Jonah. I don't quite know what's going on here. Well, I think, Chris, that only the two players uh, know what they're up to at the moment. Normally there are a few people who could suss out what's going on, but uh, with this rally, I think they're in a world of their own. At the moment, it seems Rodney's just hitting it straight. Alex seems to be just hitting it back down the line. I don't know whether it's got anything to do with the referee and the decision that's been made. Well, Rodney certainly seems to be making the point about whether the referee's seeing the ball or not. Oh, 
Well, it's crucial time here for Rodney Isles. Four points down, two points away from losing this playoff match against Alex Goff. And that's not going to help him, Jonah. No, and throughout this match, Rodney has never really looked the part. He's looked short of fitness. I think he's had a bug. Hasn't been able to put in as much work. Little drop shot there off return of service. But not in this match at any stage. And almost certainly on the way out. And he is. That's it. The best of three. Two love to Alex Goff. And I believe that's the first time that Alex has beaten Rodney Isles in a mainline competition. So the win goes to the Welshman and he well deserves the fifth spot. Our attention now turns for the last game before the crunch final. And it's a repeat of the recent national semi-final between England's Mark Challoner and the Scottish world number one, Peter Nicholl. We join the match with Nicholl up in the opening game. Well, it does seem that Mark Challoner is having a little bit of a letdown from all the sparkling play that he's produced. It's been rather lacklustre in this particular match. Peter Nicholl as efficient as usual. Down. That's right, Jonah. Peter is very economical, but Mark has played extremely well earlier on in this tournament. Found it a little bit difficult to keep it going. Against Peter Nicholl, that's understandable but that is a crazy shot slam volley at the backhand side very difficult well he certainly gifted the game ball and Peter has certainly played with his usual conviction won't lose the game from this position uh, he's given a freebie there but he still has a lot in hand Second game ball still. Good use of the court here from Peter Nicholl. Front and back. Took Mark forward there. Oh, and lovely winner down the line. Take the first game, 15-9. Peter with a lot in hand. Has to be really confident now, and that's overreaching, overstretching. Another unforced error from Mark Challoner. Very, very disappointing on the day. At least there, Jonah, who's attempting to do what he's very good at get across the middle of the court and try and put a bit of pace on the volleys. But against drop shots like that, in the back of the court with a lot of disguise, found it increasingly difficult to break Peter down today. And again, another sign of Peter moving on to the ball very early, flattening out the forehand. So Peter at match point. A really good performance after his defeat against Jancher in the semis, which will have been very disappointing to him. Covered his good spirits and his good form. Nice clean kill down the line. It's over. 15-9-15-7. Confirmation of the playoff results sees Nickel win that 3-4 clash. While Alex Goff beat Rodney Isles and Del Harris beat Anthony Hill. Before we move on to the climax of the event, though, we're going to take time out to sneak a quick look at some of the technology behind the game of squash. Things are not what they were. The wooden rackets I wielded are now a thing of the past. Perhaps, though, I may be permitted to shed a tear. Instead of timber, it's now high-tech composites and marvellous space-age materials. Do they really help? Yes, they do. Obviously, Jan Chakan is our, is our main uh, symbol, if you like, our main, our main player. Um, and who's, who's playing at the event uh, this weekend, and also Alex Goff, who's number seven in the world. Uh, Jantra in particular has, has helped us over the last four or five years since he's been with the brand in terms of, in terms of developing technologies. And uh, obviously latterly in the last five or six years, uh, the predominance of squash rackets have been, have been graphite. 
Uh, basically what you have with a normal, with a standard graphite racket is to get some stability in the frame, um, uh, you layer the graphite and the uh, number of layers and the angle of the graphite has an effect on the, on the performance of the frame. Um, what HEAD have just introduced is uh, the world's first titanium graphite composite. We offer two models, one which is 120 grams, which again is the lightest racket in the world, and one it's, which is 150 grams. So really it appeals right across the board to, uh, to those players that like a very, very light frame and, and going forward to those that you know, maybe like something a little bit more heavier. With the technicalities of the modern game now clear, Join us after the break as the all-important Equitable Life Super Series final gets underway. Welcome back to the Galleria as Jansher and Simon Park prepare for battle. This venue is quite unique and is the concept of the International Sports Promotion Group Advantage International. We have a capacity crowd eager for the confrontation and English national champion Yorkshireman Simon Park takes on the formidable skills of the Pakistani legend Jan Chakar. Well, I mean, uh, I'm number two, but you know, uh, in my mind, you know, I'm still number one in the world because if you see yesterday, you know, uh, 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 this is my first tournament and he's playing like a British clothes and he's playing league matches in London, you know. But uh, for me especially, uh, I'm playing after four months, you know. And still I beat him, you know, with a score like three love. But, uh, you know, he's the world number one, but in my mind, you know, uh, I'm the number one and, uh, and, uh, and I hope I will be I take this uh, sports, number one sports, very soon from him. Pushing to prove he's still got what it takes then, Jancha's going to need all of his wily skills to match a highly motivated, focused Simon Park, who is starting to fulfill his early potential. Well, I'm going to try and, um, try and attack him as much as possible, try and volley the ball. And I've been, moving, I've been moving really well this week, so, you know, I can cover, I feel I can cover almost anything. And I feel I can beat anyone at the moment. He's not moving the way the way he was. I didn't actually see him play against Peter Nickel, but he must have played a bit better than he was in the group matches. Um, but he's, I think mentally he's, he's struggling a bit now, and I think if I can keep keep going at him, his, his head might go. So we're set. A packed crowd here at the Galleria. A great atmosphere already. And they're into battle. Really looking for Simon here, Jonah, to get stuck in nice and early against Janisha. Show his intentions early on. A lot of tenacious rallying. A lot of determination in Simon Park's game. I think if he can get that across in this final, Janisha will have to work very, very hard to be the winner. Well, I certainly think that a number of players now believe that Jancher is vulnerable for one reason or another. And here it's not necessarily the bandages on the knees, but the fact that his form has been in and out. I think that's correct, Jonah. Nice stroke there for Simon to get the first point. But I think the shockwaves might be sending through the players' camp with the ease of Janish's win over Peter Nickel in the semi-final. The players talk quite a bit amongst each other. And the scores in the final two games are very comprehensive. And I'm sure that will be deep in Simon's mind somewhere. That forehand volley doesn't give any evidence of that. A nice confident start from Simon at this stage. It is confident, and I like the way that he's looking for the ball. Trying to put pressure on Jancher to get him working, not allowing Jancha to necessarily settle into his own pace. And that's what he did very well against Peter Nickel. Really did control the pace of the game. Slowed Peter up. A lot of slow balls, soft balls, front and back. And if he can do that to Simon, I think that will upset Simon as well. Simon traditionally likes the ball coming on to him quite quickly. 
good contrast between the two players here. I think Jancha found the 10. I do like Simon Park's attitude, Jonah. He's really known as a very, very determined player. Great fighter. Likes the big occasion. And just looking at him in now, he does really look like he's up for this match. Well, he's made a terrific recovery over the last couple of years from testicular cancer. He had enormous potential as a world junior champion. Considerable problems along the way since then, but now coming into his own. Five, Little mini recovery here from Janice Jonah, and he needed it and all. Four points on the spin. He's just started to get the pace of the game going a bit here. And again, another good shot down the line. On the ball a little bit quicker than normal. Six, seven. And starting to get control over the pace of the game. And we've already talked about that, Chris. Simon started dynamically. Put a lot of pressure on. But now Jancher is getting more control over the central area. Starting to dictate the terms of the match. Very comfortable. Again, good use of the lob there from Simon from the front backhand corner. Type of shot you have to play well against Janice Khan because he takes you forward with the backhand drop so much. Oh, and a nice variation there from him. Looked like he was going to play the drop. Took the racket through the hitting area with a little bit more speed and follow through and sent the ball to the back of the court. Again, nice deceptive hold. And this really is a killer of a rally for Simon. Taken front, taken back. Great back wall boast recovery, but under pressure again. Jancha totally in command, dictating terms and a marvellous volley boast angle to finish. Well, Jonah, it does not get any better than that. Controlled the rally from the very start to the clinical finish with the boast at the end. Full range of shots, full range of court movement from Simon Park. And that's six points on the spin for Jansha. I think you can make that seven. Nice little call there from the referee. It's always nice to get a point without hitting the ball. And just that one rally sent the message out to Simon Park that his early start and his good start has been erased. He really does seem to be holding the ball from the back of the court a lot more, Janice Khan. Showing the drop shot from deep, just pushing through the line, getting Simon a little bit uneasy on the tee area. Looks like he's gone away and maybe had a look at John Power's game. A little bit deceptive, John Power. Come back with even more shots than he's already got. Well, first one had the advantage and then the other. And finally, Jancha squeezed Simon in the backcourt. Eight successive points. Well, the continuation of this very good spell from Janish Khan. Tell you what, Jonah, he's played some magnificent squash this last 10 minutes. Don't think I've seen him control the ball, and the pace of the ball, any better for a long, long time. Well, he's been virtually unplayable, just easing into the front position. Parkey's on the move again. 
And that is a stroke. And it takes Jancha to game ball. And really, it has been an astonishing first game. Simon at 7-1. And now Jancha at 14-8 game ball. And finally, another point. Took a good drop shot to get it. And it was a bit of a wishful drop shot as well from Simon. He's still five down though, and he's still game ball down. I think he, Jonah is going to be looking for just a, a couple of points here to get his confidence back. He needs to get some control. And that's a nice backhand volley boast. Pulls him one point nearer. Again, Janisha using a lot of deception, bringing the racket in very slow on the ball. And good early attack from Simon. And at 11-14, perhaps a little bit of reverse pressure on Janisha. Well, it's been a long time coming. Simon played very well the first initial stages. Didn't get a sniff then for the next 15 minutes. A nice little run at the end here. Another point, who knows? Terrific backhand volley. Cross court, little flick. Power drive, cross court. Certainly Simon starting to play more confidently again even if he doesn't get the first it's a good omen really for him for the second hanging in and Jancher an error so at 12 14 there is some possibility of a dramatic change in fortune. Still game ball to Jancha though. Whipped away, unorthodox albeit, but a winner down the line and Jancha takes the first 15-12. Both players to this point in the rally have meticulously performed, but Jancha now shows where he is still at times in a class of his own. He sets up the next extraordinary puppet on a string phase with a subtle, deceptive hold deep. Even though Simon makes a, a good recovery, seemingly, Jancha holds the tee, and from then on in, he is worked remorselessly. Ease of movement to the front, the hold again across court. Simon just getting it up, unorthodox whip of the racket face, cross court. Again the recovery, beautiful position from Jancha going in on the drop. Now the cut off volley to the open space, diagonal sprint from Simon. A hold again, takes him back. Quietly onto the ball into the front, hold again, takes him deep down the backhand wing. Then the placement round the walls to put Simon finally out of his misery. First blood then to Jancha. Can Simon respond? Join us to find out after the break. Welcome back to the second game of the Equitable Life Super Series Final. Jancha leads, but it's still early days. Referee John Robinson at the mic. And we're off again. Solid work down the backhand wall. Peel from Simon. Thought the ball was in. 
And obviously Janisha thinks it's out. So obviously that's a good call. It'll be interesting, Jonah, to see if Simon can build on that positive finish he had to the first game. He lost such a string of points there in the middle phase. He did well to pull a couple back at the end. And obviously needs a good start. And he's got one. And I think, Chris, that rather than just Jancha totally outplaying Simon in the first game. The truth of the matter is that Simon was playing well, but Jancha was quite brilliant. Once he got into the match, there was no stopping him. Well, I think brilliant is, is a perfect word to sum up Janish's play there for large portions of the first game, and you are right, Jonah. Simon's doing everything correct, working hard, trying to be patient. He's just slammed that forehand volley into the front, Nick. And he's come out of the gates flying here in the second game. Janisha using his years of experience there to let the ball roll back into Simon's way. Simon knew it too, Chris. Smile on his face. Old pro's trick. Yes, let. Tried it again. But a let given. And rightly so. Simon quickly out of the way. There seems to be a little pattern emerging, Jonah, though. Early on in the games. Simon's coming out in the quick start. Maybe getting Janisha before he gets into his control phase. And Simon can limit that control. Give a little bit back in the middle stages. Yes, sir. He can take his leads through to victories. That was a pretty good length to the back of the court. He had Simon out of position. Clearly felt that it was a winner, but a let given. Simon was severely embarrassed. Again, that use of that hole from the deep backhand corner. Full extension there from Janisha. Had to be. It was a good drop from Simon. I'd like to see Simon really hunting the ball and trying to put Janisha under a little bit of pressure to get him into an anaerobic state. Get him out of this quiet aerobic capacity that he has. I think as well, Joe, it looks very much like Simon's trying to be the first shot in, trying to stay in front. And the loose ball gets hit. But all of a sudden, he loses control of the rally and the rhythm. And he ends up paying the price. And that wasn't an error from Simon Park. Call from the referee. Jonah, I think Simon's just paying the price after a very good start again. Just maybe moving the ball a little bit too much to the front of the court against this great player and just releasing control a little bit too often. The trouble is that when Jancha gets control over a rally, Chris, he very rarely lets go. And that's been the difference so far. Simon has been getting control for decent periods of time, not holding it for long enough to be in the winning positions at the moment. So that's much better from him. Again, winners to the back of the court. And that's always a good sign of somebody that's being patient, exerting control. And it's the easiest way to win points. You don't have to test your skills at the front, test them at the back. So Simon sets himself again at 7-9 in the second, one game down. So 
I've thoroughly enjoyed this match. A lot of quality from both players, different times. Great contrast in styles, inevitably. Highly competitive. Simon is not in awe of Jansha. He really believes that he's now reached a level where he can beat him. Jansha absolutely determined to restore himself to the world number one position. No less. A no let given. Unlucky, I think. No Simon obviously thinks so too. Exceedingly angry. And I think with good reason. Jancha came back into him. But obviously no redress. So Jancha goes to 10-7. You understand his frustration, Jonah. Very pumped up now. Good reply. Simon Park works extremely hard around the squash court. Chases everything that he can possibly get a hold of. He doesn't like to hear people think he can't get the ball. Maybe this is what he needs as well, Johnny. Maybe he needs somebody to get him even more riled up. He's certainly moving with a lot more authority. Well, Jancha has at last scored after Simon's revival. Tremendous burst of adrenaline from the Englishman. Angry, but still focused. That sharp work from Jancha. And he calmly levels. Jancha has basically played on the same way, Chris. He obviously took no part in the earlier verbal drama. All credit to Simon Park, though, because the sudden surge has forced Jancha to play a lot more conservatively. He's gone back to very steady work down the walls. Quite contained. Well, it was up to that point, Jonah, but I don't know what was going through Simon's mind there. High backhand volley, tries to flick it cross-court, and error is the only thing that's going to come out of that. Such a silly time to play it as well. Well, he's a bit lucky to get away with that one because he set Jancher up in the front of the court and... And an unforced error from Jancha. Well, it must be his birthday because he should be 14-12 down now. And he's done so well to get back in it, as you said earlier. And that's woeful from Jancha. The second weak ball into the front right-hand corner. I don't know what on earth he was up to there. Dramatically in contrast with what has gone before. So it's 14-13, game ball to level for Simon Park. Desperately needs this game. Doesn't want to face a two-love deficit. Both players working well. Simon ha hanging in. Jancha dominating now. Simon all over the place asking for the let. Yes, let. And the let given. I think that'll be somewhat disappointing for Jancha, and it is. I think one or two people might suggest it was compensatory for the drama decision. 
Some minutes ago, but Simon has another bite at the cherry. That's terrific backhand work. Both players sparring on the forehand side. Simon positive short. Again. And the third one. And it's a winner. Janja calls it down. Referee says thank you. Second game to Simon Park. 15-13 and it's 1-1. Now look here as we see Simon and Jancha matching each other shot for shot down the backhand wall. Eat your hearts out at the rich quality of racket work. Wrists cocked. Racket heads almost constantly up. Early preparation of swing. Open faced and smooth through the strokes. Maintaining excellent body balance with eyes glued to the ball throughout. Absolute textbook stuff. And in contrast, every squash player's nightmare. Simon, under remorseless pressure, plays an athletic but ill-judged volley short. Punished further by Jancha, he then has a disastrous movement too straight onto the ball and duly fails to profit from the hastily improvised flick straight. Kiss of death. It's one all. Let's draw breath and join us again shortly for a final roll of the dice. Hello again. Moments of truth for both gladiators. It's getting tougher by the minute. Who will prevail? Jancha a better start in the third. Put on his metal by the, the recovery of Simon yes, Park sir. in the second. Considerable discussion going on. Six, three. And a typical squash debate. And you'll find that discussion wherever the game is played competitively. Well, whether it's right or wrong from the referee, certainly Spark Janisher into a little bit of action. He's come out flying after that decision. On the ball very quickly. That's a crashing forehand across the court. But with a lot of authority. Obviously not very happy losing the second game. Feels he's been in control for most of the match. And he's hustling onto the balls in the front of the court. He knows that Simon likes to play the ball in off the cross court. Simon. Letting the referee know he believes Jones should deliberately got in his way there to stop him hitting a winning shot. Referee not agreeing, just playing a let. A little bit of frustration from Simon. Quite understandable at times though. Pace has certainly picked up from Janisha. He's certainly getting on the ball a bit quicker now, Jonah. Yeah, he's hurrying it up now, Chris. the heart of the match. Simon quickly onto that one though and Fury down the backhand wall. <laughs> Janish has maintained his slender lead throughout this third game. Still trying to pick the tempo up when he feels he can. Lovely way to the ball there. 
forced Simon back and played the simple boast. So Jancha goes to game ball, 14-11. He's played with some authority over the last 15 minutes. The pace has picked up. And that'll be a stroke. Again, an indifferent shot from Simon. Jancha, wily as ever, waited and took the point in the game 15 11. Simon now has to gather himself. The match isn't over. Jancha knows that only too well. And he knows how the young Yorkshireman will fight to get back to parity in the fourth. Jancha leads two games to one, level. So Jancha with the advantage. It'll be very interesting to see what type of pace Janisha elects to play in this game. Certainly played the third at a much higher intensity. Look to go with Simon's quick pace onto the ball. And I really like that early volley from Simon. He was looking for the quick reflex, responding to a slightly less accurate shot from Jansha. Early volley again short. Certainly looks the part, Chris, when he's hunting the ball in this way. And a lot of variation, creative, across the face of the front wall, one of his favourite shots. He really does seem to start off pretty well in these games, Simon does. Apart from the third game, he's come off to two flying starts, the first and the second. He's got an early lead here in the fourth. You're right, Jonah. When he is hunting the ball, getting in front, making Janisha move quickly, he's squeezing errors, he's getting a little bit of frailty. Just whether or not he can keep it up and whether or not Janisha will allow him to keep it up. Well, he's flying now and he was in the first and the second. He didn't capitalise in the first. Oh, and that's a classic three-wall boast from the Yorkshireman. 4-0. It's really vital now that Simon doesn't get too carried away. He needs to be consistent with his short balls. He has to wait for the right opportunity. Can't fault his tactics at the moment, though. Four out of four. And again, he's got Janisher on the ropes. But too narrow there. Aggressive across the court, but not enough width. That's a good straight volley winner. Well, this amazing Pakistani has responded yet again to early difficulties. Found his way back to take this marginal lead. Backhand cross court volley for the Nick. Let's have a few more of those. Well, he's still got the positive pills popping into the system at the moment. Still very aggressive. Good surprise tactic. Again, takes the ball in short, forces the lift straight. And you get the feeling at the moment it's just whether or not Simon can get the balance right. Well, that was a fantastic squeeze by Jancha, though. Ball really tight on the backhand wall. Simon could do nothing about it. Jancha 
keeping it very practical. And the master at the end game. Oh, what a catastrophe. I don't know what happened there, whether he took well, his eye off the ball. But totally out of rhythm. What we would call a real junior error. Or a beginner's mistake. Well, there's a time to have those type of shots played. It's certainly not 11-10 in the fourth game. And again, squeezed nice and straight from Janisha, forcing the error. And Simon's gone from 10 all to 13-10. He's only blinked twice. And the thing is, Chris, that Janja hasn't actually done anything dramatic. He squeezed two points. He's put in a very responsible, respectable service that induced a, a very strange error. He's got three-point advantage. And Simon looking really ragged. Janja again squeezing tight to the side wall very good width and what on earth was Simon up to there well it's given Jancha match point to take the super series title he's been ever so composed in this last period Simon on the rack An unfortunate error again, going in on the backhand. Kusha Khan runs out the winner in an 80-minute battle. 15-12, 13-15, 15-11 and 15-10. So the Pakistani has shown his form and his intent. Well, you know, he's, uh, he's always uh, very fit and, you know, he's a he's good runner. And uh, uh, when he reached in the final yesterday, uh, 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 I know that the match, the final match, will be going long, you know. And uh, the way he's playing today, you know, I play with him many, many times, but uh, the way he's playing today, you know, physically, I think he's the best uh, ever played. Throughout the match, Jan Khan showed his true qualities as he pressured and squeezed Simon Park into difficulties. In the first sequence, JK commands the tee and quietly plots the ball away from his enemy until Simon is sent yet again forward, further embarrassed and fails with his defensive cross-court backhand lob. Here we see a typical scenario developing down the backhand wall. Both work deep, but Jancha gradually gets the upper hand, sits in front, cuts off on the volley, tight and short, leaving Simon almost nothing to hit. Easy termination for Jancha. The Pakistani champion, calm, composed, smooth, swing, balanced. Taxi cab for Parky. So what were Simon's thoughts on his very considerable challenge for the title? Well, I just, I just knew that I could, uh, if I kept him on court, for as long as possible, I, I, I was fitter than him. But he's, he's very clever in front of the court, and it's a question of keeping keeping him on court. Uh, it's just that Jansha, I got chinks of light, and then Jansha would close it down again, and it's, it's just very difficult to keep your concentration. So Jansha takes the splendid Equitable Life Super Series trophy and has clearly made his point this week. We hope you have enjoyed the squash as much as the capacity crowd at the Galleria. Bye for now.